Morning, everyone. This is Dave Hammond from Mac Solutions. Uh, welcome to this webinar, number six in the series of Kepware 2020 webinars. And this is special, this webinar today, because I have a, a guest who is going to be helping me. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Basim from Microsoft. So this webinar is about OPC and how you bring OPC and IoT together. So here's the agenda we're going to be going through. We're we'll going through a bit of IoT overview, IoT data overview, a little bit about the concepts of how Kep Server and Microsoft Azure can play together. Um, there's a very detailed slide that shows you all the various things involved in the, in the whole topology. We'll go through a bit of that. Um, then we'll cut the slice the, I, uh, the Azure bit down and we'll look at what is the IoT Edge and what is the IoT Hub. And then how uh, Kep Server and Azure can actually link together. What are the technical ways that they, it can talk? This webinar is, is ideal for people who are doing IoT projects who might be getting involved in the interface between uh, shop floor systems and automation systems and higher level enterprise systems. It's also good if you happen to be a, an Azure integrator uh, who might uh, know a lot about Azure but might not know how automation systems pass data and how to get data across from the shop floor up. Uh, and anyone who's getting involved with that sort of project for the future. So a little bit about IoT clouds. A few years ago, you wouldn't have heard the word IoT mentioned really in the same sentence as automation systems and, 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 and Kepware and PLCs, but a lot has changed in the last few years. There's now a lot of new big data and IoT vendors who are uh, need to interface with their industrial control systems data. ThingWorks obviously is owned by PTC also and Kepware. Uh, Microsoft Azure is a, is a big player in the area, but we're also seeing other people, Amazon Web Services, IBM, Watson, uh, there's, there's several others. That, so the things have really moved on a lot in the last few years between these big data people and, and, uh, and automation systems. So what's, What's specifically different about IoT clouds? So the uh, the thing about IoT clouds is they have lots of different ways of ingesting data. So if you look at the way that data can come from uh, industrial systems into Microsoft Azure, uh, popular ways are MQTT and HTTP. You can also take data in using OPC UA. And the same thing goes with other of the, of the platforms as well. They all have similar sorts of standards now the important thing there is standards those are they are standard interfaces so you generally find that there's no specific custom code that needs to be done on either side in order to get the data across the interface because the standards being used are standards um, the great thing about these endpoints as well in terms of ingesting data is they are on a huge scale um, so you can get data and pull it into an entire cloud ecosystem once it's in there it's, it, it can spread out in the ecosystem and you can ingest a lot of data and store it for a very long time so the scale of the iot clouds really are the important thing and the standard connectivity so what's different about iot data as well um, this is generic slide about iot data data not specifically industrial but IoT data is different from industrial data. So on the, on the left-hand side, starting from the left to, to the right, the data itself necessarily doesn't have any consistency to it. You might be getting data from lots of different places, creating data in lots of different ways, different formats, different presentations, different protocols. And so when it got, starts to become amalgamated in towards the center, it's not necessary which, which bits of data are in the same context as other bits of data. So uh, the, the IoT data can be quite disparate and, and quite um, multifaceted. You then start amalgamating the data together. So IoT data is, is an amalgamation of lots of different streams. And the other thing about IoT data is it's characterized being expected to be retained for a very, very long time, for infinite retention potentially. So you can see that IoT data is different from your, if you think of the same sort of diagram with PLC data into a SCADA system or a historian on the shop floor. It's a different sort of data uh, and the data flow is different. Now on the left hand side with structural in, in uh, consistency, the Kepware OPC server can help with that because obviously the left hand side of Kep server would be 
the, uh, the, the, the different formats of data from the different devices. And Kepra can then uh, provide an OPC UA standard feed out the right hand side towards um, the, the next step up. So to a certain extent, the, the structural consistency can be, that problem can be solved by using Keb server down to pull the data in. So, so what, is the, what is the pipeline of data for an industrial application? Obviously you have data on the left, which is need to be collected. And on the right hand side, you have the data when it's turned uh, from data into information, then information into knowledge, and then knowledge hopefully into wisdom. So you've got your collection of data on the left and your analysis and your knowledge on the right. So what happens in the middle? Obviously, you've got a storage bit where the data is stored, ready for analysis. And between the, the storage part and the collection part, you have this process part. And we'll come on to that later when we're talking about the IoT Edge from Azure. The data is taken in, it's processed, it's amalgamated together, it's analyzed on the local level, and notifications can be created out um, for the uh, operators down close to the data so they can take some action. So how does KEP Server and Azure, how do those two things play together? When you're, um, you're dealing with an Azure project, you're doing it for a, a reason, a couple of reasons. First of all, you might be looking at machine status, you might be looking at centralized uh, equipment efficiencies and, and availabilities. You're doing that in order to uh, gain business benefits, perhaps see how much energy you're using, get a better understanding of your process so you can so you can tweak it. And you might be creating a, a standard platform or a standard roadmap or a standard model for uh, a developing project across multiple sites. At the end of the day, you're trying to yield improvements for your business. So that's the general concept of how it fits. Kept server below and, and the IoT hub and, and Microsoft is all sitting above. This is a more detailed diagram showing all the various things um, that uh, Azure can do. The important parts on this in terms of uh, a, a KEP server integrating with Azure are, are done in red text. So you can see the KEP server on the left hand side. It's talking the proprietary protocols to the PLCs and SCADA systems and automation systems down on, uh, on to the left of the slide here. The KEP server is then passing the data in some fashion to Microsoft Azure, which is the, uh, the, the, the Azure part is mostly to the right of the firewall. So the cloud part of Azure is to the right of the firewall and the on-premises is to the left. So Kepware has multiple ways of passing data to the Azure cloud platform. The first one is using the IoT Edge Docker container runtime, which is actually running on-premise down where Kep server is sitting. The second way is via the IoT Hub, which you'll see just to the right of the firewall. And the third way, you will see the long-term storage, which is below the IoT Hub to the, to the bottom right. So Keb Server can feed data into the IoT Cloud in three different ways. So we'll deal with those one at a time, and uh, we'll, we, you'll see that they're, they're for different purposes. So the first one is via the Edge container. You can see the KEP server is an OPC UA server. You can see down within the IoT Edge Docker container, there is an OPC UA client. And that client is the route to pass the data through to the IoT hub. And you can also see within that box to the left, the IoT container box, you can also see these analytics. So what can happen is the data can pass through an analytical engine before it gets sent onto the IoT hub, which is where your, your edge service is common, and we'll look at that in a bit. The second way is to send the data around using the uh, around the edge analytics and around the OPCU interface using the IoT gateway, using MQTT and REST direct to the IoT hub. And the third way is through the data logger, KEP server creates uh, log files, SQL or ODPC data log files, and can send the data directly round the IoT hub itself straight into the long-term storage of Azure. So this, this diagram is quite good because it shows the different things that you can do with the cloud on the right, but also shows you how the, the methods to get the data into Azure. Okay, so let's look at the IoT edge and the IoT hub and, and, and dive a little bit deeper into what those do. 
So what is the IoT Hub? The IoT Hub is a managed service and it's in the cloud. So it's the messaging hub for the, the bi-directional data between the IoT cloud environment and the devices down on the shop floor. So it effectively, it extends the reach of the IoT solution down towards the edge, providing the connectivity services, uh, the device management, provisioning and authentication services. So it does that necessary step of connecting the cloud to the devices and making sure that that path is kept, is reliably, uh, reliably working. KIP server can also directly connect with the IoT hub using MQTT and RESTful services. So what is the uh, Azure IoT Edge? What does it do? The data is coming from the left where the machines are and needs to go to the right to the IoT Hub. So the IoT Hub is the destination for the data. So the Edge is a runtime service running down at the Edge close to where the PLCs are. And it can execute calculations, it can do logic, you can create alerts, you can create alarms, you can create actions down from the Edge. And it also acts as the necessary interface between the, the, the OPC side of things and the IoT hub. So it's a, it's a conduit and also a processing uh, module. So just to put some flesh on the bones of the different ways that KEP server can integrate with the IoT hub. The first way is using the MQTT. So what you would do here, you would have the KEP server acting as an MQTT agent. So this would require a product from uh, KEP server, which is the IoT gateway. This would take the data from the PLCs using the PLC protocols. The KEP server plugin, the IoT gateway would then um, interface that data using MQTT into the IoT hub on the right hand side. So that's a pretty straightforward way to do things. And we're finding that a lot of people who are using KEP server at the moment are using the MQTT method of doing it. It's very straightforward to do. With the, the MQTT way of doing things, each connection up, each device coming from uh, the uh, in, inside your KEPWare project would make a, a different MQTT connection. The second way is to use MQTT to the edge container. And the advantage of doing that, it's very similar to the previous one, but the advantage of doing that is that you can amalgamate the data from other sources. So the IoT edge container could get data from KEP server, but could get other data from other places down on the edge, do some processing, doing some analysis of it, and then pass that up to the IoT hub. This is the IoT edge from Azure talking to the IoT hub from Azure. So that's done using the, the, uh, the the Azure uh, messaging service. The third way is to use the OPC UA client within the IoT Edge. The Edge OPC UA publisher module would then take that and push that to the IoT Hub. Okay, so this is quite a brief webinar today. Um, it's been about the IoT clouds, a little bit about IoT data, the concepts of Kept Server and Azure the a bit more detail about how the two connect and the different methods that we have for connecting between Azure and Kep Server. Microsoft and PCC work very close on, on the industrial IoT side. Um, so uh, Kep Server and is, is one of the leading products that many of our customers use um, on the edge. So Microsoft is in, is in the business of providing an, an IoT platform and that IT platform caters for the industrial IoT shop floor connectivity side that, like Dave discussed uh, today. In addition to that, to the general IoT scenarios, things like smart cities, things like environmental monitoring, and so on. So there, the IoT hub that we mentioned is really the the cloud gateway to all sorts of data ingestion in IoT scenarios. And then beyond the IoT hub to the right hand side of, of Dave's uh, diagrams are many cloud capabilities for data storage and analytics. Uh, and these provide you the capabilities to you know, store your data, uh, run analytics uh, programs, algorithms on them. Um, uh, there are a number of applications 
that are Microsoft produced, like for example, Tom Series Insights and, and so on, but also the PTC um, uh, ThingWorks, uh, which is one of the applications that uh, runs on Azure and, and it's um, uh, well used by many of the industrial uh, customers. Now, in, in within, within that, this diagram that you see in front of you, there are a couple of things. So if you, if you look at machine learning and functions, uh, within the Azure Cloud, for, let's take this as an example, and also just above them, there's stream analytics. These are analytics capabilities in the cloud. Stream analytics will let you deal with data at, uh, as it comes in stream. So you can do aggregation, you can do windowing, you can run your own uh, user-defined functions on, on the data that's coming in the stream. Um, and also you look at Azure Functions, it's also custom code you can write in things like C, C Sharp, uh, uh, JavaScript and so on, where you can do some custom uh, manipulation of the data that's coming. And then Azure Machine Learning Service allows you to build a machine learning algorithm that runs on the data and then gives you uh, some prediction capabilities or inference capabilities. Now, the beauty of this is that all these capabilities, you can actually run exactly in the same way as you develop them in the cloud on the edge containers. So the box that on the left-hand side of the firewall, which says analysis, analytics, ML on edge, functions, and so on, these are simply Docker containers that will do exactly the same algorithm that it will do in the cloud, but used in the edge. And the, and, and the way that we combine them here is that Capware does all your Capware server, Cap server does all your data collection from the shop floor. It's, it's, it's you know, a product that's been built over years. The uh, Capware, they have the capability, the expertise in managing and handling the data securely from the shop floor. But then if you want to do some processing with that data on the edge, you can, you might want to do some aggregation, you want to do some alarms locally and so on, you can, use all these uh, um, analytics capabilities that you imported from the cloud on the edge, do the processing locally, and only send to the cloud the data that you that you want to store in the cloud. Some customers, for example, you use this also for video analytics as well, the same, the same paradigm, but you know, from industrial IoT, we have these um, uh, OPC UI components, the twin and the publisher, which help you with uh, moving the data between Cap Server and the cloud. If you don't want to use the direct method of going directly, where using the the Capware uh, Server uh, IoT plugin. So once your data is in cloud, you have really an endless opportunity for analyzing and running other applications uh, or storing the data in, in uh, for long-term storage and analysis. So you know Microsoft and, and uh, Capware or PTC. Uh, our, our strategic partners, the developers and the engineers work together in order to make this uh, a flexible solution, give you flexible options and give you as many uh, capabilities for data analytics in the cloud or on the edge. Thanks very much for that, Basim. That was uh, that was very good. Thanks for, for explaining that from the uh, Microsoft Azure perspective. So thanks so much for your time, everyone, this morning. and. Uh, Hopefully that everyone will stay safe and well. Thank you.